What's better than one publicly funded stadium? <laughs> Two publicly funded stadiums, uh -huh. at least in part. Like this guy, Kurt Bailey, who's got the lead quote in the article. He's the president of Related Midwest. He's the new is, face, baby. Well, he's the new face of this article. That's, I don't know that he's the new face of the whole thing. I think it is not a coincidence that after Jerry Reinsdorf stepped in it, and looked bad in the leather jacket uh, down there in Springfield and got rebuffed by the governor that you then have this guy stepping up with more news because there is news in this thing, but the repackaging with this guy as the face of it is not a coincidence by any stretch. And I, I will be very surprised if we hear a ton more from Reinsdorf when they do their official news leaks like this is to the Sun-Times. I, I think, I mean, it's like some of the way the quotes read and everything, it's so clear it's trying to recontextualize it and rephrase it in a much more sensible way. Oh, I agree, I agree with that, but that's this story is all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot more stories between now and then because you know what? You know who doesn't want uh, with Kurt Bailey? You know who doesn't want Kurt Bailey to be the face of this? Kevin Warren. Kevin Warren. I got you. Well, Kurt Bailey might just be the face of the White Sox portion of this. Maybe, but you've talked about the legacy component in this for Jerry and how Jerry's good at making deals and all of that. All of that is still in play, though, with this guy as the face of it. You know? We'll see. Well... We'll see. I, I, it, I, they need each other. Remember, we did the segment, what, a week ago or whatever about how they need each other and the big news of them working together. The Sox need the Bears' relative goodwill in, in the state and the financing possibilities. The Bears need the Sox political savvy, and they need to share the 2% tourism tax. And so this guy talking about it, wouldn't it be amazing? I mean, read any of the quotes you, you like, Danny, that yeah, jump no, the, out at the, you. The, yeah, wouldn't it be unbelievable for our city if you were to see two amazing facilities for these great sports teams built at once? Uh -huh. I'm a Bears fan. I want to partner with the Bears to create these two great environments and make our city yes. e e even better. Yeah, when he was. Uh, he hasn't seen the renderings. Yeah, that was funny Of to the me. domed lakefront stadium south of Soldier Field that the Bears are proposing. That sounds awesome, and I am for that. We're working with them to have a financing partnership that makes sense for us and for them and for the city and the state. Uh, that, that I'd like to see that uh, suggestion, by the way. Renderings of a domed lakefront bear stadium possibly surrounded by a hotel and entertainment district accessible to public transit. Boy, that's a big thing to plop down into the South Lot, isn't it? Where? <laughs> <laughs> My question would be where, how, and what public transit? Demolish. Loading on the lake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Demolish the old McCormick place, you know, and use the South Lot. Soldier Field will be gone except for the colonnades and go back to the museum campus. So it's a net swap of land. Like, but but now there's a hotel there and and what what public transit? Because there is still Lakeshore Drive. The gondolas. The gondolas. <laughs> <laughs> and I know there's going to be people environmentalists that are not going to want to hear this, but could you build a stadium that was? In the water. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. I just. I guess some some places have, but I, they're not gonna. I just. But I don't, I, okay. But this isn't the Maldives. <laughs> like we're not. We're, we're not staying in cabanas, cabanas on Lake oh, Michigan. Overwater cabanas as suites for this the new stadium. This is Bali. <laughs> it's Bora Bora. That's where it is. But but look, his. He talks a lot about the White Sox part of it. He's the White Sox face. And he talks about the 78, and he refers to it as one of the greatest pieces of real estate in the entire country. This company, Related Midwest, th this... I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, I, I don't think it is. Because you're talking about a giant chunk of real estate 
this close to downtown with the river access and what you could do with all of it, I don't think it's ridiculous. It is unbelievable that this thing is not developed. And maybe there is some broader reason. I know Lawrence thinks there's something buried under there. That's a that's a real issue. No, but, but I mean, but the, the, that's the, an amazing piece of real estate for a giant city in in America. Yeah, but the guy who owns it and is in charge of developing it happens to say that it's the greatest piece of. That sounds very Trumpian to me. It's the best course. It's the fi- it's the finest club. It's yeah. only, only the best things you know what I mean like like, this this is a guy his boss is Stephen Ross is the owner of the Dolphins yeah and that that is a serious businessman a serious billionaire and I have have a Stephen Ross thought for you uh towards the end at, at some point but like he puts it out there that they're gonna unlock that he he says that if you build the stadium on the 78 build the Sox stadium it will unlock 7.5 billion dollars worth of private investment Over the next decade of all the things that they want to build, the apartment buildings, hotel, office building, dozens of bars and restaurants, all along the Chicago Riverwalk, all the way up towards Lake Street. So just not south, but all the way. They're going to invest on all that stuff. That's the kind of money they're throwing around. So this has now changed from Jerry Reinsdorf's grotesque ask. I need a billion and I need another 900 million. Uh, he immediately says the nine hundred million that Jerry asked for for the TIF subsidy thing is now four fifty. So he's already cut that in half. This is now turned from I need a billion and another nine hundred to I need a billion and four fifty. But I'm giving you seven point five. I'm putting seven point five billion dollars into the city that you will be able to take taxes from. And 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 that- the, the way that he's selling it, that is a much better framing for the ask. And he's the guy to go down to Springfield and try to make this work. They mentioned another politician, not the governor, but they mentioned somebody else, like who they're tr- they're working with. You know, it's like th- th- these are the negotiations. And Jerry was sloppy and grotesque, and he's Jerry, and he blamed the fans, and nobody wanted to hear it. Well, yeah, Th- that this, was... this guy's doing a much better job already. If, if we are just comparing... PR rollouts of ideas that ask for public funding. This guy's doing a better job than Jerry because there there was no fan blaming in here. And, and I'm, they, I'm with you on that. And they, he brought new news. He brought new news along with it. They furthered the the but, thing. But the money part of it is still pie in the sky. Where is the proof? Oh, if you give me 1.5 billion, uh-huh. I give you 7.5 billion. The, the, there is no proof. No, w- what it's saying is. Because they know you have to spend money to make money, Illinois. So you extend the hotel tax by right. by 35 to 40 years. All you're doing is extending a tax that already exists. You do that, and you give us the 450 and the one other thing, the sales tax overlaid district about you know in some infrastructure stuff. You give us that, and then we put $7.5 billion of development into the city. That, that spending money to make money, that's going to work. On a lot of people, it, 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 if this is indeed the thing that happens, and they and they work together, socks and bears, and it's he's saying I'm going to spend seven point five, spend money to make money. That's going to make that's going to make sense to a lot of politicians down there. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. I there's a lot of like so now the plan also for guaranteed rate field is soccer, and they're going to magically start building around it for soccer that was never built around for baseball because they don't need as much parking. So they'll, ha- they'll use some of the, uh, the, the parking still, but they will in it. They're, they're, they're offering you something that we can do a make good as we bail on the neighborhood. And they reference the alder woman who said, what are you, what are you doing here in the neighborhood? He's like, I heard that. I thought about that. Right. So they've, they're trying to cover all the bases now in a much better way. Yeah. Yes, they 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 are. It is still a huge public money ask. A huge public money ask, and I still, if it came down to the Bears or the White Sox, and I know this from the White Sox guy uh-huh. is trying to frame it as let's do it together, and Kevin Warren has said I'll work with anybody. Okay, yeah, the Bears ask is a lot more reasonable. It's a lot more reasonable. Because that stadium can bring in a Final Four. That stadium can Mm -hmm. bring in a Taylor Swift concert in December. That stadium can bring in WWE and a Super Bowl and all those. New White Sox Park does not in and of itself bring in anything new. But it has 81 games of inventory. 
in addition to... But it's got 81 games of inventory now. uh, Yeah, but this is the new one in a much better spot, and they need it to anchor everything. But But don't don't underestimate the 81 games of inventory, because that means all the teams that come in, all their fans that come in and get hotel rooms that stay, especially if they're excited about a new city, city ballpark. I mean, the Bears will have their home games and their preseason games and then the other events like you're talking about, but... It, if if the new White Sox stadium is going to allow more concerts, which the ISFA hinted at last week, that that's a lot of inventory and a lot of tourists you're talking about. But he's saying that they need an anchor tenant to make the 78 viable. Yes. But he's also saying it's one of the great pieces of real estate in the history of the world. It, 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 both things are true. He references How? because they've tried to do stuff, whether Amazon was going to build their – their hub there or the casino that was going to go for there. And apparently they've owned the whole thing to drive the energy we need for restaurants and retail and bars. We need an anchor to make this project work from Amazon to the casino. We've been searching for that. Ultimately housing the white Sox is the absolute best outcome. It is the best. I understand why they want it, but what I'm saying is if it's such a vibrant area and such a vibrant neighborhood, if you built apartments, you would sell the apartments. Yeah. But he's saying that they need, a primary draw. So that was going to be the Amazon hub or the casino. And that's why it hasn't been, hasn't been built on. Cause it's a huge parcel that needs a primary thing to, to, to really anchor, to anchor it. But that just doesn't like the South loop is vibrant without the white Sox. The South loop is selling condos without the white Sox. Restaurants are viable in the South loop without the white Sox, right? It is a, it is not a, it is, it is a neighborhood that, is growing. There is development there. Uh-huh. It is. It is an uh, an arrow upward neighborhood. I I agree with that. And, so, and, and that is gonna that's gonna give a big pause. But it's not growing as fast as it could theoretically. And if you can multiply that, you know. And so yeah, they're gonna have to sell it. They're gonna have to because you're right. Because the South Loop is already doing pretty good. It's not. It's not doing as great as they've dreamed of it doing. Sure, and I. And by the way, I'm not disputing that an anchor tenant would obviously bring more people there. Obviously, yeah. obviously, it would. I get why the guy who owns the land wants. Oh yeah, no, his sell job. <laughs> How about this, Danny? I'm just saying, I, I, his motivation uh, is transparent. I own the best piece of real estate anywhere in the country, uh-huh. and in order to make it so, I need someone that has 81 home games a year that will bring in at least 20,000 people yep. uh, to my area to buy all my other things. And like, as, I get why he wants and it. And as he's trying to sell you, he says, when a game lets out, you're going to have dozens of boats waiting to take people right back into downtown. Talking about the largest private investment in the history in the city of Chicago. Seven and a half billion in private investment. What you're getting is a massive, massive return. I, I think he's doing a much better job of framing it, and it's going to work on a lot of people. Alright, here's my Stephen Ross thought. Okay. He owns the Dolphins. Does he own a baseball team? No, he does not. Yeah, so Stephen Ross buy the White Sox from Jerry? Hey, man, his, his company, I wonder if those conversations have already begun. That, Jerry, I'll help you get this built, and that's why they're working with Related. And then, remember my early thought that the owner could take over in the middle of the process, perhaps, once they have a stadium plan going? Or if Jerry were to pass, they could sell. This is, I mean, this is this is spo- this is absolutely gift wrapped and handed to you as an option that the White Sox then get absorbed by Stephen Ross, who clearly has the billions it would take to add the White Sox and would be a much more attractive property as an anchor to a real estate investment that he's already making. He's eighty three years old, Stephen Ross. Yeah. Well, maybe his heirs are interested in being in the sports business. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the succession and plan is for the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins, I know that they did a weird, not, not weird, but it was weird for the NFL. They sold a ton of minority stakes, kind of like Jerry, to celebrities to try to make the Dolphins oh, cooler. That's right. Remember, like J Lo owns some of the Dolphins. Like, like, he sold like one percent. Mark to, Anthony, right? Yeah, yeah, to like to like a bunch of people right. d- down in Miami. So I I have no idea what Stephen Ross's 
succession legacy plans are afterwards. I don't know how many kids he has. If no, they like baseball, any of that. Nor stuff. do I, as we speak. And I've been sourced on a bunch Two of kids. stuff in this process, but I'm not sourced on my Stephen Ross hunch. Okay. I'm just. It just makes all the sense in the world. So I'll have to dig into that. Whether his kids want to do it, what what that what that looks like. But I mean, if if you own the company that is trying to get the stadium done so you can then invest in the area and profit off it and have this unbelievable piece of real estate, it would make sense to me then that you might as well buy the team as well because when it's going to be up for sale very soon. Yeah, he apparently has something within in F1 also, but he was looking to sell a, my, a bigger minority sure. stake to, to Ken Griffin of the Dolphins. It's like John Henry who um, owns the Red Sox. And also owns uh, a soccer team yeah. and owns a bunch of other holdings and that Theo is now a part of. This is the future of, of professional sports team management is to own several, right? The Malcolm Glazer, the Glazers own the Bucks and a soccer team across the pond. Yep. So I could see Stephen Ross just adding the White Sox with their new fancy stadium. Uh, to his profile. It's just that, that that article is just read kind of funny to me of like, hey, we can get two stadiums done. Okay. They're going to, it's not like you get a package deal on concrete. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, like, what is the, I think they would actually. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> but, but a package but, deal with the contractors. But they have hey, a swing by our place when you're done with them. We got some extra stuff. We got well, the same like Russ Armstrong yeah. does the windows for both stadiums. You guys, uh, you guys got any nails? We ran out of <laughs> nails at this place. Can we? You send a runner over. Well, but here's the thing: they're the South Loop. They're linked together already by that two percent tax. Yes, because that's the thing they. The ISFA worked with the White Sox on their new stadium and then also worked with the Bears on their Soldier Field renovations, and they're coupled together with the t same tax that they're looking to extend. Right. So it's a pretty easy thing to sell if they can work together. The thing is they never used to work together because Jerry didn't like Michael McCaskey, but things have changed. If it was as easy as I put in $1.5 and at the end I get $7.5 why do they need public funding? Wouldn't you just raise the money and then keep all of the profits for yourself? Um, I, I, I no, I know because they need. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly how to answer that. You know, I just, I just, it. Those quotes, I agree with you. It's framed well. Yeah, like, but like, you know, but it, it's, it's just, it still is too. He's putting it cleaner than the actualities of it. Yeah, because the actualities of it, the billion dollar ask is a tax extended for the next 40 years because of the bonds. Right. So the state is like, okay, you can have that for the next 40 years. And then the 7.5 bill and like it, uh, of what they spend to to create development will lead to money that comes in on the annual budget, you know? So you're comparing a 40-year tax extension which is theoretical on some level to what will be tangible as soon as they're done some of the development. Let's